ऑनरेबल श्री एस निरंजन रेड्डी श्री एस निरंजन रेड्डी प्लीज थैंक यू डेप्यूटी चेयरमैन सर I rise on behalf of my party to support the bill, essentially because it ticks three major boxes. One, Deputy Chairman Sir, it speaks of economic, uh, the ecological sustainability or environmental sustainability. That's a big plus in its side. Second, it looks at economic advantage for the country by saving energy. The third big reason, Deputy Chairman Sir, is it tries to make India more. energy self sufficient which will help india in the progress of becoming an economic power so while these are the three major things that we support the bill for we still have a complaint and the complaint is largely that the bill could have been more ambitious it is a little timid in terms of its reach if i may use the expression uh, deputy chairman sir now why i say it is a little timid is the bill is made applicable to any building which has a minimum contracted load of 100 kilowatts now if the central government while the bill provides that the state government could provide a lesser threshold if the central government tomorrow wants the bill to be applicable across a larger sector building say about 50 kilowatts or 75 kilowatts it will need the bill to be statutorily amended again because this bill does not use the legislative device of when the building is described it could be described to say 100 kilowatts or as may be notified from time to time generally the government uses this legislative device so what would then happen is if at a later point of time after 3 years or 4 years if the government wants to make this bill applicable to 50 kilowatts and above buildings they simply have to issue an official notification in the gazette it does not have to go through the whole statutory process of an amendment which may have to be made again so this is one suggestion i have for the honorable uh, minister and the government to consider and i'm making the request through you deputy chairman sir while i say this there are five points of concern which may again have to be operationally worked out by the government and i'm placing it deputy chairman sir with your permission now before the house i've already mentioned about the buildings being above 100 kilowatts the act also does not make a provision for someone who has lower than 100 kilowatts building capacity who would voluntarily want to be a part of this energy saving program because they won't get carbon credits so one of the mechanisms that could be worked out is other than what is specified if someone wants to do a voluntary submission to this energy conservation mechanism because a majority of the buildings are below 100 kilowatts contracted load the second point of concern uh, deputy chairman sir which i have is that the act seems to work in a clear binary there is central government discharging one set of roles there are the state governments which have been authorized under the act to discharge a different set of roles what is missing is a coordinated approach between the central government and the state government because now each of the state governments will act in its own manner there is no coordinated approach just to give an example uh, deputy chairman sir when we have a cop summit when countries of the world can come together in relation to energy conservation or carbon saving mechanism why can't we have a similar feature in india where the central government shepherds all the states maybe conducts a summit or maybe conducts some energy conservation uh, convention where the different states can be guided to do it in a coordinated manner otherwise right now the act provides a role for the state government but each of the state governments will be operating in its own sphere without reference to the central government or any other state then the third point of concern which i have is the aspect of a lack of regulator now this has been touched upon by my preceding speaker dr abhishek manu singhvi and also mr wilson i am seconding and thirding their proposal because we have now come across in the carbon market in a world experience where companies are resorting to what is now termed as green washing which means without actually resorting to saving of energy they project a false picture of energy being saved now unless there is a regulator 
because we have an energy auditor mechanism here under the act but the energy auditors would again be operating without any regulator overseeing their functioning several legislations including ibc several other legislations we have a regulator who oversees these professionals who are entrusted certain responsibility i would uh, suggest and request the government to maybe think of bringing about a regulatory sphere because now the bill uh, does not have that feature this can only be done legislatively maybe it can be done through a special law or it could be done through a further amendment then the fourth point of concern this was briefly touched upon by one of my friends who spoke before me is the compliance difficulty i would want to bring the government specific attention deputy chairman sir to one aspect the act now makes a reference to fossil fuels separate from <coughs> non fossil fuels separate from renewable energy which means non fossil energy would be energy which is separate from fossil derived energy or renewable energy because non fossil energy is not defined under the act and another part of the amendment now provides that all the buildings factories vessels will now be required that they must have a, 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 a specified quantity of non fossil energy now two submissions i have deputy chairman sir for the government to consider one is when there is going to be a prescription that some part of the energy must be from non fossil sources they may have to clarify non fossil or renewable because today with the way the amendment sta stands non fossil is meant to be different from renewable and non fossil would be nuclear or very few areas which would come within non renewable and again non fossil so, so i would respectfully think that the government may have to give bestow a little attention on this aspect and this was again touched upon by my preceding speaker and i want to quickly touch upon it if the government were to specify that a particular building in delhi must avail 10% of supply from non fossil or renewable energy it only gets the supply from the discom it has no independent source if it is located in a, uh, a concrete city like delhi or bombay they would not be able to contract with a private person for availing the renewable energy so maybe some arrangement where they can do a compensatory they can go to some industry in some other area and say look i am required to purchase so much 10 kv of my energy if i you purchase i pay for it that must be set off in my requirement i quickly touch upon the last point uh, deputy chairman sir which is the overlapping eligibility again just touched upon 14a speaks of energy saving certificate 14aa speaks of carbon saving certificate some mechanism may have to be worked out where people don't ask for both benefits or there has to be a relatability between the two it's a progressive legislation i support it i would request the government to take note of some of these things so that the bill becomes far more outreaching in terms of what it wants to achieve thank you chairman thank you honorable niranjan reddy ji प्रोफेसर मनोज कुमार झा जी क्या उपसभापति महोदय